Do you want to learn a simple way to kill a tree by removing a ring of bark from the trunk? Let's learn how. I'm Jeff with the Backyard Birds Channel. I have hundreds of invasive trees on my property that are preventing more desirable trees from growing. The trees could be cut down and removed, but that's labor intensive and time consuming. Killing the tree and leaving it standing is a much better alternative. A standing dead tree becomes a food source for woodpeckers and other birds which seek out insects that feed on the dying tree. Furthermore, the dead trees can provide much needed nesting habitat for cavity nesting birds such as various woodpeckers, chickadees, and nuthatches. If you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing to my channel. Girdling is the process of removing a ring of bark from the trunk of a living tree. The process can only be done in the growing season when the sap is flowing and the tree is actively growing. To understand how girdling works, a person must understand how a tree feeds its roots and leaves. The visible layer of the tree's trunk is the outer bark. The outer bark protects the parts of the tree that transmit water and nutrients. The layer found between the outer bark and the wood of the tree is the inner bark. The inner bark transports nutrients to the roots. Beneath the inner bark is the sapwood. The sapwood is responsible for transporting water and nutrients to the leaves. When a tree is girdled, it is still able to transport nutrients to the leaves but because the inner bark is removed, it cannot transport nutrients to the roots. Within a year or two, the tree exhausts its roots and dies. There are only a few simple tools needed to girdle a tree. Wear a pair of leather gloves to protect your hands. A pry bar is the tool used to peel the inner and outer bark off of the tree. Use a hand ax to remove small branches growing below the girdle. For thick bark trees, a mallet can be used with the pry bar to penetrate the bark. You can find links to the tools in the video description. When girdling a tree, it is important to follow some rules. To successfully girdle a tree, there should be no branches below the debarked ring. If the branches are not removed, the tree will be able to continue to feed its roots. Do not damage the sap wood of the tree as it needs to continue to transport water and nutrients to the leaves. Any new sprouts from below the ring should be removed. Make sure the ring is at least six inches wide as trees can repair the cut by growing new bark. Select the tree you want to girdle. This is a white mulberry. It is easily identified by the small, mostly lobed leaves. I examine the trunk to find a smooth area free of limbs and knots. Select an area that is waist to chest high so you can work more easily. Before you remove any bark, Use the hand axe to remove any limbs in the area you are girdling. At this point, it is a good idea to remove all branches below the area to be girdled. Begin the girdling process by using the pry bar to remove a small area of bark. Once you get to the sapwood, you can start removing sheets of the bark. Push the long end of the pry bar into the bark and slide it between the inner bark and the sapwood. You will know you are doing it right as the inner bark naturally separates from the sapwood. Continue removing bark until you complete a debarked circle around the tree. Sometimes using the short end of the pry bar works better to remove the bark. Verify that at least a six inch swath of bark has been removed from the entire girdle. Not all trees are going to be a straight round single trunk. Sometimes there will be multiple trunks for one tree. When there are multiple trunks, girdle all of them. Or an alternative is to girdle all but one trunk. By leaving one trunk untouched, the tree will survive, but the girdled trunks will not. Sometimes part of the bark of the trunk will be dead. When part of the trunk is no longer living, just remove the live portions of the trunk. Large trees have thick bark and will require more effort to girdle them. Small trees have thin bark, which is easily removed. These are examples of white mulberry trees that reflect the trunk sizes and shapes I debarked. Here is a collection of Siberian elm trees that represent the trunk variations I girdled. Once you have girdled a tree, it's important to monitor the tree afterwards. Check to see if the tree has repaired the girdle. 
If the tree has grown new bark, remove it. Look for sprouts below the girdle the season the bark is removed. If the tree begins growing branches below the girdle, remove them. If the tree keeps sprouting, you may need to use a brush killing or herbicide on the sprouts. After you girdle a tree, it will continue to have leaves and look perfectly healthy. Sometimes the leaves will all die the first year, especially on small trees. For large trees, the tree may survive the growing season, but perish the next year once it puts on leaves and exhausts its roots. In the second year, some trees may look dead but produce sprouts below the girdle point. These sprouts should be removed. By the end of the second growing season, the tree should be dead. Once dead, the tree will attract birds that will eat the insects feeding on the decaying tree. There are many benefits to girdling. The tools used for girdling are inexpensive and readily available. Usually, no herbicide is needed. It's a quiet procedure because no power tools are needed. Girdling is much less labor intensive than cutting down a tree. Dead and dying trees attract certain insects which in turn feed many kinds of birds. Dead trees provide much needed homes for many species of woodpeckers as well as screech owls, great crested flycatchers, and eastern bluebirds. Furthermore, the dead standing trees still provide some shade and wind protection for newly establishing trees. There are some caveats to girdling. It shouldn't be used in areas that people frequent as in time limbs will fall from the dead trees. Don't girdle trees near man-made structures as falling limbs could cause damage. Girdling doesn't work well for all species of trees. Tree species that sucker may be encouraged to produce even more trees from root sprouts if they are girdled. The process of girdling doesn't kill the tree instantly. Sometimes it takes two growing seasons to completely kill a tree. Girdling is only effective in late winter, spring, and early summer when the inner bark slips off from the sapwood. By early summer, the inner bark and sapwood begin to bond, making girdling difficult. Do not attempt to girdle a tree in fall or early winter as the inner bark is bonded to the sapwood. There are two non-native invasive trees growing on my property that are preventing more desirable trees from flourishing. The Siberian elm, Almus pumila, often called the Chinese elm, was planted by the millions across the Great Plains for windbreaks. It is native to Siberia, China, and Korea. Unfortunately, it produces masses of seeds, and the seedlings sprout nearly everywhere. The white mulberry, Morris alba, was introduced from China to North America. It was planted on my property as a source of fruit, as the berries are quite delicious. Unfortunately, birds love the berries and spread the trees far and wide. Both species grow abundantly on my property, preventing native trees from growing because they compete for sunlight, moisture, and nutrients. Furthermore, I'm removing two invasive shrubs, European buckthorn and Tartarian honeysuckle. I use a mattock to chop these shrubs out of the ground. Learn how to use the mattock by following the link at the top of the video. I'm replacing the invasive trees with various native ones. Because South Dakota has harsh winters and hot, dry summers, only native trees that are adapted to the area are being planted. American elm, common hackberry, and honey locust are natives of South Dakota and already growing on my property. Other South Dakota natives growing here include green ash, plains cottonwood, and box elder. I'm adding bur oak, American basswood, black walnut, and Kentucky coffee tree, all native to South Dakota. Native shrubs I'm encouraging include choke cherry and buffalo currant. For a complete list of the trees found on my property, see the video description. Creating a diverse collection of native trees and shrubs will provide a variety of insects for all the nesting birds on my property. Let's summarize what we've covered. Girdling a tree is simply the act of removing a ring of bark from the trunk of a tree. Because the inner bark is removed, the tree cannot send nutrients to its roots and will eventually die. I hope you found the information in this video useful and will use it to kill unwanted trees on your property. Hi, I'm Jeff with the Backyard Birds channel. If you like this video and want to see more like it, you may want to subscribe to my channel. Just click the red subscribe button below the video. 
To be notified of new videos, be sure to click the bell widget next to the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on the Backyard Birds channel.